Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with a uh, pretty special video. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the new Serastis Knight Lancer, the beautiful new plastic kit for me to build and paint on the channel here for you guys. The only problem is I am under a strict deadline. I'm actually going on holidays the day after I paint this thing. That means that I have one solitary day to get this miniature built and painted and ready for you guys on the tabletop. Do you think I can pull it off in one single sitting? Well, I don't know. I'm well, gonna use every dirty trick, every fast thing that I have, every tool and any piece of skill that I can get my grubby mitts on to try and get it done in a single sitting. So yeah, let's see how that goes. Before I get into that video though, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to continue doing what I am doing. There's over 120 of you guys now, so it really does mean the world to me that I have so many people supporting me and helping me on this crazy journey. If you are interested in getting involved in that, there's links to it below. You get access to a private Discord server that has over 200 people on it now, um, helping each other out with hobby and stuff. And you can talk to me on a daily basis about what's going on in your hobby and tips and tricks, all those other bits and pieces. You also get an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year from me for being a member of the Patreon, which I think is a pretty good benefit. Okay, let's not waste any more time because I do not have any time to waste. Let's get stuck in to this Night Lancer. Okay guys, and this is the big brute himself. As you can see, it is a colossal piece. Um, and if you've watched any of my night videos before, you know this is the stage that I take the actual night exoskeleton to. All built, all posed, all glued together. I don't like moving arms. I don't like to remove the arms after I've constructed it or I don't like them flapping about. So these are actually glued solid in this position, the position I want the model to be in when it's on the tabletop. Every other speck of the miniature has been left off and has been glued to... Um, these little extra stands that I have. This just means that I can paint each individual piece comfortably in my hand as I go along and it breaks down the project immensely. If you had glued all these panels on and then you went to try and paint them, it will be a nightmare. So I talked about how I'm going to make this project as quick and as smooth as humanly possible. One of the first things I'm gonna to do to uh, mitigate some work is I'm going to spray the entire exoskeleton in black and then I'm gonna have a light dusting in silver. And that's it for the metallic undersuit. I'm serious. I'm going to add some weathering to it later on, but I'm not putting any more silver paint on this at all. This is how it is. I think it looks really good. And once you slap all the colorful armor panels on top of it, you don't notice it at all. I am going to get at all the soft seals, pipe work and everything else of it with some black Templar paint. This is a very quick and effective stage. All you got to do is go around and find all the little bits you want to be a slightly different color and hit them with some black paint. Nothing really much to it. As for all of the armor panels, I then quickly broke out my airbrush. I know I usually avoid airbrushing on this channel as I want the videos to be as accessible as humanly possible. This is the only stage that I did with the airbrush. You can, of course, get out a large brush, um, some black or whatever color paint you want to, and paint in all the panels in absolutely no time at all. Um, but this is, of course, just a little bit quicker. I was thinking about using my contrast method like I had on all of my Black Templar vehicles, but realized that this was going to take too much time. And that's why all of these parts are silver first. If you know how I paint my Black Templars, you'll know that it's a silver paint followed by black contrast. And unfortunately, I just didn't have the time to do it. I would have liked to have contrasted up a night. I think that would make a very fun video. Um, but a video that I would have a little bit more time to get done. So I went in with the airbrush, two coats, nice matte black paint. I think I used some Army Painter matte black paint here, uh, air paint to uh, give it some nice clean coats. And obviously there's quite a lot of um, of parts on this miniature. I had to go back to the exoskeleton because obviously the toes are done in black as well. The uh, armored gauntlet that holds the power fist or her, the power shield um, it has some of that same uh, armor panel so I made sure to get that done. And the casing on the uh, power lance or power goad is also done in that color. I then jumped over to a bone color and did some of the other parts. Obviously this is going to fit into my Black Templar scheme. So some of the shields and some of the motifs are going to be done in bone. I loved how these knee pads, these are actually optional knee pads. You get two different sets. They're already quartered for you for you. And to match it with that kind of knightly aesthetic, I decided to do them in quartered. So I'm going to go for cream and red. And then obviously with the trim around it will be nice and gold. It, they're actually some of the nicest parts on the miniature at the end. I was really happy with them. 
um, and I think it definitely helps to tie in with that technique. So as you can see, I've broken out my squid my airbrush with the uh, fine point to it, and I'm going in and airbrushing up the different quarters, the different colors, taking my time not to get any overlap going. For other parts, all I did was add a little bit of my masking tape and gave them uh, one or two coats of the appropriate color, whether that be red or cream, just to get a nice smooth coverage over the black that was already airbrushed. Same with the tilt shield. And one of my favorite things about having um, uh, doing nights is of course how beautiful it all looks when you tidy it up with things like the gold trim because right now all these parts are kind of looking a bit kind of scruffy a bit messed up um, and there's no escaping the trim stage on a night miniature it takes by far the most amount of time but i think it's worth it i think it loves, leaves a really really nice result and like i said you can kind of be as messy and as kind of messed up as you want like i said before if you wanted to hit all the black parts all the armor panels with a colored paint go for a big brush slop it on get it all over the place but when you go back in and hit it with that gold paint it's going to be beautiful a light uh a lighter black paint so this was corvus black for me which is obviously got that hint of gray to it was then used to highlight all of the black armor panels in the miniature as well just to make the color pop just a little bit more you can see it really clearly under the intense light I use for painting, but when it's on a tabletop, it actually doesn't stand out. It doesn't read as gray like it's doing here in this video. So don't worry too much about that. And I think it's once again that lesson of a lot of people are going to go out there and buy these knights. And a lot of people are probably going to build these knights as soon as they get them. But then how many people are actually going to get them painted after they've done it? How many of them are going to left on shelves gathering dust? People are afraid to get started or get paint on them. That drives me mental. If I can get this guy done in a single day, surely you guys can get it done in a week or a month of evenings. If you have an hour or an evening, maybe you can get it done in two weeks. And that'd be a so much cooler thing to add to your collection and put on a tabletop, play some games with a fully painted knight. This is that really nice stage I was talking about. Uh, by nice, I mean the result of it is nice, not so much the process. Painting the trim on a knight does take an inordinate amount of time. And you have to give it that time because you want to be super careful. At this stage, you've done the black to the stage before weathering. You've done the red, you've done the cream, you've done all those parts to that stage. You do not want to then go and hit them with the gold. So I think it is important to get a nice fine point of brush and paint all of them. One of the things that I do that a lot of people don't do is I just paint the flat top part of the, the motif. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, there is a little lip around the edges that is red and black that probably should be gold i don't paint those in gold i don't try and go in right to the paint so for instance the red um because i think that is where the mistakes are going to come in and it's going to start to look a little bit sloppy um, and i don't think it's necessary once you have the entire trim done on a piece you don't notice it at all it's going to look really fresh really clean especially a section like this with the quarter to airbrushing done where it's a little bit messy once that's tidied up with the gold trim it's going to I think I've got about, what, I've got four painted knights now, not including some of my armagers. I've got two armagers painted and four larger knights. I think I have about six other knights to paint still. So I should really get uh, some work done and get those other ones done as well. Here I am telling you guys to get your knights painted and I've only, I haven't even got half of mine painted yet, but hopefully I will get to them at some point soon. I would like to see all of my knights on the table all painted up. Um, the question is, do I do any more in this scheme? Or so far, they're all different colors. I can't help it. I like the uh, the idea of the, the kind of rogue knights. For some reason, the name of what those knights are has now eluded me immensely, and it's going to annoy the hell out of me. The free blades, thank you. Um, I like painting them as free blades because then I get to play around with lots of different colors. I'm now throwing a shade across all of the gold just to uh, add some depth to it. A little bit of weathering and as you can see i'm going over that a little bit with the shade you can go in around all the edges it can hit the red it can hit the black it just adds a nice bit of shadow and texture to it it looks really cool and as you can see these parts are starting to look really clean really like i've spent a hell of a lot of time painting them and i have not it's now time for my favorite stage which is transfers i am a sucker for transfers if you've watched any of my videos before you know if there's an opportunity for me to use transfers then i'm going to use them and like I said, because I'm going to be basing this guy on the Black Templars, I got grabbed my Black Templar transfer sheet and uh, started to grab a couple of those beautiful crosses and a few other details. 
and I got them into position and looking nice. I also uh, liked a lot of the transfers on the new Sarasis Knight uh, sheet itself. There's a beautiful new transfer sheet with that. And there was this beautiful set of transfers from a particular house, which is like a, a crowned skull. Uh, and I decided that that was the original household that my Lancer was from. And it has now and since moved over to the Templars, but it has kept some of that iconography um, from them as it basically honor their home house. So you'll see it across its uh, shoulder pads. If I show those bits off, you'll see that I've left those original motifs in, but the nightly crosses are pretty much everywhere else. And of course, Aquilas, because, well, Imperium. And there you are, you can see the skull, the crown skull, and then on the other side of the shoulder pad is the, the cross. A few red crosses on the side. So with those transfers looking fresh, it's time to start the weathering process. All I use is a bit of case, case sponge and some lead belcher paint. I lightly remove it. I use some dabbing across the flat armor panels, add some chipping, and then I basically scrape it along the edges to add a little bit of um, highlighting to the gold as well. Just like this, very quick, very effective. It takes about two seconds, and I've both weathered the armor and highlighted the gold all in one step. You guys can do a lot more work to it if you want to I'm putting in those line scratches and everything like i said i've got a day to do this um, and projects are just building up so i don't have time to go in and do kind of crazy work with everything if this is your kind of one big project for the month or the quarter or the year then of course take all the time you need give it the love and attention it deserves but for me i'm all about getting things done quickly effectively look a nice tabletop standard don't get me wrong I do intend to go back to this miniature and paint things like the pilot. I really want to paint the entire interior. They give you a beautiful sitting down night pilot. And the armor panel that I'm holding now, I'm leaving not glued. So I can take that whole top of it off and look inside the cockpit and see what's going on. And then unfortunately during today's painting, I did not have time to get the two beautiful hanging banners done. So one comes down off his lance and one comes down between his legs. And I'm definitely getting those things painted up, adding kill tallies and other transfers and some stuff like that and getting them glued on in the next week or so now that I am home. You guys might think that I'm going overboard on the chipping. You can of course tone it down a bit if you want to or not chip at all. It's another option entirely. But I always imagine knights and tanks and stuff getting um, spattered with small arms fire on a near continuous basis. So their paint is going to be kind of chipped and marked. Here's what some of the armor panels look like at this stage. The last thing I'm going to do for uh, kind of painting wise is I've got the bits that are kind of powered. So the big powered energy shield and of course the power generator that sits in between it. I've got some Talazar blue contrast paint. And I'm just carefully feeding that into all of the recessed areas just to give the idea that there is flowing energy bursting through the shield. I do like a lot of the options that people have done with uh, 3D printing the panels that sit in between to give it that crackling. And I may very well do that. Get a nice colored uh, clear resin. Get them printed out and glued in. I can see myself doing that. And obviously all the energy coils for the actual generator itself. And the center part I did with the Talazar blue. Once again, just adding another fleck of color. You can do the eyes of the night with this, the uh, kind of hatch window at the top if you want to. So those are all of the bits and pieces that I have done. As you see, the toes are black and the armored gauntlet is done in the black and gold as well. And now all I'm gonna do is very carefully add some super glue and glue each and every single one of those armor panels into place, except for, like I said, the top one, because as you can see, the entire interior of this miniature is done. Uh, and I can still pull out the entire cockpit and pull off the front panel so I can get a painting it. And that's what I want to do. I want to take my time, get that done at a later date. And as you can see, as soon as I start adding spots of color to this thing, it just lights up. So now we're going to do a quick jump ahead to the entire armored knight built, painted and ready for war. I took a break at this uh, point just and tried to decide whether I wanted to weather it even further. And I decided that I did want to. So I... I very carefully added some weathering pigment to the feet and the exoskeleton and any other bits and pieces just to once again give it the idea this thing is striding across a Martian wilderness uh, kind of desert motifs. Here it is looking clean and fresh so if you guys like that you can obviously stop at that stage but for me these more war machines like I said with the small arms pattering off they do not stay clean for very long in a war zone you may have explosions going off around them the mines getting set off or artillery barrages or there's going to be so much debris and dust and grit in the air as these things stride through that they are not going to be meticulous and clean so with the weathering powder added this is the final result for my personal 
Black Templar Sarastis Night Lancer. I am absolutely delighted with the result. I hope you guys are as well. There's still a bunch of things that I think I'm going to go back to. I'm going to add some airbrushing to the, the end of the Energy Lance. Yeah, paint the interior, add the flags, and a few other bits and pieces that I've noticed around the miniature I think should use a little bit more love and attention. But as it stands currently, I'm more than happy to put this thing in my cabinet and display it as a finished piece. I would love to know your thoughts on my, some of my processes throughout this video. Do you think I should have waited and put more time and love into it? Nah, too much else to do. A few close-up pictures just to finish it off. That's time to, of course, move on to the next project. And there we have it guys, one Serastis Night Lancer in plastic, painted up in a single sitting, using every down and dirty trick that I have at my disposal to get it done. What do you guys think of the result? I'd love to know what you do think in the comments below. Let me know if you think I pulled it off. You think I need a lot more work? You think I should strip it and start again? You like the scheme? You don't like the scheme? Just let me know all your thoughts below. That would mean the world to me. Okay guys, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you give it a like. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please stay two seconds ahead of your day and hit that subscribe button. It really does make a huge difference. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.